Hey everyone, uh, just a warning, this is not my typical content. Non-canonical, 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 non-canonical. Recently, my older dog needed some help getting around, and I had a hard time finding a, a decent, larger dog wheelchair that wasn't on back order. Uh, this is not a polished project for beginners. Uh, you'll need at least intermediate fabrication skills, um, some power tools, and the ability to modify and make changes to the CAD design as needed for your particular dog. Um, I put all the CAD and uh, bill of materials uh, out on my GitHub so that you can download it for free. The dog wheelchair concept operates much like a rickshaw cart. Um, the front of the wheelchair clips to a harness with two 3D printed clips. Um, the back has two wheels to support the dog's rear end and a simple sling harness that goes under the dog's belly actually supports the dog's weight. All the tubing for the uh, wheelchair is half inch EMT conduit, which is super cheap. Uh, I recommend printing all the parts with uh, six to seven walls and six to seven top and bottom layers out of PLA+. Plus. I initially printed all the parts out of PETG, which uh, works fine, but I later found out that PLA was significantly stiffer and uh, stronger. If your printer is able, I highly recommend printing at least the male portion of the harness clips from nylon. PETG or PLA works in a pinch, uh, but it breaks more easily and it's much harder to unclip because they're stiffer materials. Looking at the frame, the most challenging part of this design is that it isn't super easy to adjust as you need to drill holes. And getting the tubing lengths right can require some trial and error. In fact, I ended up drilling so many holes in my first pieces of tubing that I just ended up replacing it with a brand new one once I got the fitment correct. Our male model here, Maverick, is demonstrating the ideal fitment for the wheelchair. Uh, the front to rear, the tube should be roughly level, maybe a little bit lower in the front with the ground and at the height of the dog's rear hip bone pivot. The upright should be at the rear hip bone pivot level or just a bit in front. Um, the rear bar should be far enough back that it doesn't interfere with the uh, dog's tail and ability to do their business and the width of the frame is about one inch wider than at the dog's front shoulders where it mounts to the harness. If you don't have a drill press, I've included a handy uh, drilling jig. Otherwise, it's virtually impossible to drill a perfectly straight hole through both sides of the tube. Uh, to drill holes, I typically put the uh, tubing in the part. Um, I drill a hole through at least the one wall of the tubing and then slip it out and put it on the jig uh, and then drill all the way through to the other side. One of the more difficult parts of the assembly process is actually the uprights themselves where the wheels mount, uh, which have a five to 10 degrees of camber. Uh, this angle ensures that the dog's uh, feet can't hit the wheels or the axles, and it allows the wheelchair to pivot more easily. I found the easiest way to do this was to roughly set the angle to one side, mark and drill the holes, and then install the bolts. Then I measured across diagonally to ensure that the second side was going to be at the same angle. Currently I'm using some cheap Harbor Freight 10 inch cartwheels. They work pretty well but are a bit heavy. Um, you can use any wheel meant for a half inch axle. I've actually ordered some larger 16 inch diameter bicycle tires which will roll over obstacles a bit better. Just a quick note, I have a hole where the tubing can go all the way through the uh, axle mounting block um, but you can just leave the tube short of that so that you don't have to try to drill a half inch hole through the conduit. Now to the more fiddly bit, the sling itself. Uh, this is more of a choose your own adventure. I'm not uh, super happy with my setup, but it works for now. Uh, I used some roughly 3 8 inch vinyl tubing that I had lying around. Um, I drilled some holes and I zip tied the tubing to the rear. Um, then on the front, I made two clips out of PETG that the tubing slides into and has a friction fit. And then I used some zip ties just for some extra friction once I got them set the way I wanted. Um, I then used some electrical tape wrapped around the tubing as a stop to keep the clips in place from being able to slide. An important part of the sling is the webbing in the middle. Obviously, if you can sew or have some old hiking socks, you can fabricate this rather easily. I'm currently using some gaffer tape turned inside out and then wrapped uh, right way around to create a loop. Also for comfort, I've added this foam tubing that I've slipped over the vinyl tubing. I found it on Amazon. You'll find adjusting the height of the sling requires some trial and error, depending on how much weight you need to take off the rear end of the dog. 
So now that you have the wheelchair itself, you know, I highly recommend that you watch some YouTube videos on how to adjust uh, doggy wheelchairs and more importantly, how to train your dog to use the wheelchair. The dog training part is a tricky business and be prepared for it to take a couple of weeks. We started off with one to two minutes per day. And then finally around two weeks later, Maverick finally took off and got the hang of it. You really need to make sure that being in the wheelchair is a positive experience for the dog. Well, that's it. Again, I'm putting this out there with the clear disclaimer that this is a 1.0 prototype design with uh, warts and all. You know, feel free to ask me any questions you might have in the comments and I'll do my best to uh, answer them. Thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.